Has the first principles definition of the derivative got you feeling confused, unmotivated? Finding the derivative of a function using the first principles definition has that impact on a lot of people. In another video, I showed you just where this monstrous formula comes from. But it's time to dig into an example of just how you apply it so that math can start making sense when other things don't. All right, so in this example, we're given the function f of x equals 3x squared minus 2x, and we want to find the derivative of that function using the first principles definition. Now, just to make this example super fun, I'm going to play a game of guess the derivative with you. And I'm going to do that using the mathematical superpowers that I have. I am able to guess the derivative of this function having never solved it myself. Now I realize you have to take my word for it and I'm just kind of some random guy on the internet helping you with math, but just for the purposes of this game, just play along. So I'm going to write my prediction down on this piece of paper right here and we'll see how accurate I am at the end. And if I get it right, I'll teach you the trick. So 3x squared minus 2x, I'm assuming the derivative is going to be f prime of x equals 6x minus 2. So that is my guess right there. f prime of x is going to be equal to 6x minus two. But that's enough fun and games. Let's compute a derivative using the first principles definition. So the first thing you really need to know about the first principles definition is what each piece means. The first part here, f prime of x, just means the derivative of the function f, which in this case is given up here. We're not going to worry about the limit as h goes to zero quite yet because we're going to get to that later on in our derivative. But this next part, f at x plus h, is super important and this is also where many people make a lot of mistakes. This is not f times x plus h or any other creative sort of thing you can come up with. This is f at x plus h, which means you're going to take x plus h and you're going to stick it inside f wherever there's an x. And you'll see that once we get started. We're then going to subtract the function f of x, which is just the function that we're given. So nothing fancy there. And then, of course, we're dividing everything by h. But again, that's not really important right now. We're going to get to that later on. So the first thing we need to do is we need to substitute in this x plus h into our function. I'm going to start just by rewriting my limit as h goes to zero, and I'm going to take x plus h and just put it into the function wherever there happens to be an x. So I'm going to have my original three from the function. I'm going to open a set of brackets, and because I have an x, I'm going to place an x plus h there. I'm going to close my bracket and square it. So this is just the three x squared portion of my original function so far. But I also have a subtraction by 2x. I'm going to subtract 2 and I'm going to open a bracket and I'm going to put this x plus h there as well. Okay, and I'm going to close my bracket. At this point, all I've done is written out f at x plus h. But if I consult my first principles definition, I know I also have to subtract f of x. So I'm going to do that by putting a subtraction sign and I'm going to put 3x squared minus 2x and I'm going to put that in brackets because I'm subtracting, and that is going to impact the sign of each of my terms. I'm going to divide this entire mess by h, and that is going to be the first step of this first principles problem. You thought the formula was bad, gets worse. <laughs> but from here, we're just going to clean this up a little bit using what we know about math. We'll start with this 3 times x plus h squared, and a common mistake that I see people make is they take this 3 and they distribute it into the brackets first. Because we have an exponent of 2, we actually have a binomial times a binomial, so we have to simplify that first before we distribute the 3 in. So I'm going to write the 3, and I'm going to open a set of brackets, and inside the set of brackets I'm going to put the result of expanding and simplifying x plus h squared. Now there's a fun little memory trick that I use that tells me to square the first term, which would be x squared, square the last term, which would be h squared, and then I'm going to double the product of those two, which would be x times h, I'm going to double that, which would be 2xh. And I'm going to put that in the middle, square the first, square the last, double the product, maths of the last. From here, I'm going to distribute the negative 2 into this set of brackets to get negative 2x minus 2h. And I'm going to distribute this negative into the brackets to get negative 3x squared plus 2x. And you can see why those brackets were important. If I didn't put those brackets here, I would get a mixed up sign, which would seriously impact our derivative. I'm then going to divide everything by h yet again, and still just kind of leave it alone. We're not ready to deal with h yet. Now I still have a little piece that I can simplify here, which is this 3 on the outside of the brackets. I'm going to distribute that 3 into the brackets. And because I'm on a whiteboard, I'm not going to write out another line. I'm just going to kind of tinker with what I have here. If I distribute that 3 in, I'm going to get 3 times x squared, 3 times 2xh, which should be 6xh, plus 
3h squared. And so you can see I've now removed all the brackets and I'm ready to start collecting like terms. Now, one of my favorite things about finding derivatives of functions using the first principles definition is that you can always check your answer in the middle of your computation. Because what you should see happen is that any term with only an x, not an h, should cancel out entirely. And you're going to see a few examples of that here. We have 3x squared, and then over here we have negative 3x squared. 3x squared minus 3x squared is 0, so it's gone. Same thing in this case goes for negative 2x and 2x. We add those together to get 0. And if we do a quick scan, there is not a single term here that only has an x. Sure, this guy here has an x, but it also has an h. That's going to be important. So if you find yourself with a term left over that has an x, you've made a mistake. So you should probably go back through your work and find it before you continue. The next thing I'm going to do is just clean this up a little bit. I'm just going to get rid of all the stuff I canceled. So I'm left with 6xh. I'm adding 3h squared and I'm subtracting 2h and I'm dividing by h still. And we are finally ready to start working with this mysterious h. Now, normally when we evaluate limits, we can take this value right here, substitute it into our expression to find our limit. But in this case, when we do that, we would get zero in the denominator, which is not helpful to anybody. So the way we get around that is we look at the numerator and we're going to remove a common factor of h from each term. If we take h out of each term, we're going to be left with h times 6x plus 3h minus 2. You can see I have common factor down to h. So why did we common factor out that h? Well, we did that because we now have multiplication in our numerator with an h on the outside of the brackets, and we're dividing by h. We know that h divided by h is 1, so those two are going to effectively cancel out. Which is exciting because now when we go to evaluate our limit by subbing in 0, we no longer have division by 0. This common factoring step is why it's so important to make sure that you are only left with terms that contain an h in this step. If you had any terms without h's left over, you wouldn't be able to common factor out that h and cancel. So what are we left with? Well, we have 6x, we're adding 3h, and we're subtracting 2. Now, are we at a point where we can evaluate our limit? <laughs> yeah. When we take 0 and we put it in for h, this term's going to disappear, and sure enough, we are left with 6x minus 2, which, as you may recall, is the exact expression that I wrote down at the beginning of this video. So after all of this long, pretty tedious work, we arrived at a derivative of 6x minus 2. Now, a mathemagician never reveals his secrets, but a promise is a promise. There exists a top secret derivative trick that will help you compute the derivative of a polynomial function without using first principles. And I will show you that trick right now. We start by looking at the exponent on our first term. In this case, that's 2. We take that 2 and we bring it down in front of the function and we multiply by the coefficient that's there. We then reduce that exponent by 1. In this case, that leaves us with 1. We then move to the next term. We take our exponent of 1, we bring it down in front, and we multiply by the coefficient in front of that term and reduce the exponent by 1. In this case, that's 0. We then clean all this up by saying, well, 2 times 3, that's just 6. x to the power of 1 is just x, and negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. x to the power of 0 is just 1. So after all of, what, five seconds, we found the derivative of this polynomial function without using first principles. What is this black math magic? Will it work every time? Am I allowed to use it on tests? All questions that are going through your mind right now, which is why you are going to want to watch this video right here, right now. I'll see you there.